Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor and I'm a Sony Imaging Ambassador. Now what you see here is my Pilot 7L messenger bag and I'm going to show you what I've packed in it for when I'm traveling really light. Now I've got a forthcoming trip which is going to uh, result in some motorcycle diaries. This is a Mark and Max film that I'm planning to make in the next month. So let's uh, unpack this bag. Okay, so I'm uh, taking a leaf out of Wotancraft's brand slogan here, which is live your adventure. So Max and I are going to go to uh, Las Vegas and hire a couple of Harleys and then set off on a monumental ride uh, that goes from Nevada through California. The ride is called Freedom to Dream Ride and it's uh, going to be raising money for War Child. This is sponsored by Wotancraft. Okay, and if you're wanting to make a donation to this charity to help uh, children who have been displaced by war just follow that link by going to justgiving.com forward slash fundraising forward slash freedom to dream and I'll thank you now for your donation that you make to help children in need. Okay, so this uh, ride, once we've uh, left uh, Vegas after hiring the Harleys, we're going to head up through Death Valley. Now, as long as you don't go in the middle of summer, it's usually no issue because there is a well-sealed highway, Highway 190, that goes through this uh, landscape. And as you can see from this Google map, it's uh, quite a place to uh, travel through. Now, as I said, normally it wouldn't be a problem, except the highway looked like this last month when some very historic flooding uh, hit Death Valley and have taken a, away large amounts of the sealed roads. So I'll let you know how we go and we hit Death Valley in just a, a week's time. Once we've uh, cleared Death Valley, we'll travel north up uh, on the inside of the Sierra Nevadas, the dry side. Well, typically the dry side. And we're going to try and get to the Tioga Pass, which uh, heads out over the Sierra Nevadas and down into Yosemite Valley. That'll take us up at uh, below sea level, right up to 10,000 feet, if that pass is open. Now, there's a short weather window for this Tioga Pass. It often uh, doesn't uh, open until June when the the snows melt and can close as early as October if we get early snowfalls and they don't plow this road so you you either have to hit it before or after the snows or basically head further north to find a pass that is open. Once we've got down onto the uh, um, the green side of uh, California, we're going to head over to San Francisco. We'll enter San Francisco over the Golden Gate Bridge and then hit Pacific Coast Highway that will take us from San Francisco right down to Santa Monica where we will conclude our ride in Los Angeles. Now, Max and I are not uh, strangers to adventure travel before. Um, in the 1980s, Max and I rode around the world. Uh, the watery bits were covered by putting the, uh, the bikes on uh, container ships and uh, crossing the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans. And we managed to get all of the way around and had quite an adventure on the way. And this time we raised money for uh, Save the Children for, uh, Fund and Down Syndrome Association. Now, as I get older, I seem to be wanting to travel lighter and lighter. I'm really over traveling or over packing and hence this is the uh, reason for this video tutorial I'm showcasing. Now I'm easy to pick out in a crowd here. Uh, I'm the one in the middle not carrying a heavy backpack or large tripod and I'm carrying on uh, the way I mean to go on which is to travel really light for this particular trip. So I'm going to put all of my camera gear in one Pilot 7L messenger bag. They come in that khaki color or the charcoal black black cover. I'm going to take the, uh, the black versions here. Now um, that um, 7L will fit into the uh, tank bag of my uh, BMW R80GS motorcycle uh, and that is um, useful size because it will also go into the pannier of the Harley Davidson Heritage Softail Classic that Max and I will be hiring in Vegas. Now the 7L will go into that uh, um, pannier on the exhaust side because it is slightly shorter there and I'll manage to get the 10L bag which will carry everything that's not the camera gear on the other side. 
Now all of my clothes is basically going to fit inside my open face crash helmet there including the gloves and that can uh, also fit into uh, a carry-on um, uh, seven kilo uh, carry-on uh, flight bag there with that um, 7L messenger bag. Uh, the 10L will go over the handle of the um, of the carry-on bag and uh, that's the uh, laptop bag that I typically put under the seat in front of me on the plane. You can come into a little bit of a problem on internal flights that do restrict you just to a single bag and don't really allow that messenger bag but I usually get away with the two bag system here as I move forward. Now one of the upgrades if you are interested in this Pilot 7L bag is definitely so it's quite a cheap upgrade it's that Fidlock system they come uh, with a standard metal um, 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 clasp there but I actually like this little Fidlock on account that it can open very quickly with just one hand there so that is definitely a worthy upgrade if you want to take that now I'm going to this may not seem like it all fits into that um, 7L messenger bag there but take my word for it it does indeed all fit in now I'll uh, restrict myself to four primes now that the choice of primes may vary but I'm really looking for lenses that are very small and have reasonably wide apertures. I don't like moving ND filters from one lens to another so I'll put um, an ND filter on each of those. Now a lot of people use the variable, variable ND filters, I like uh, fixed ND filters and then just let the ISO float up or down depending on the ambient light. You'll see a peak design wrist strap there just below the lenses with a peak design clip that will go on to the camera. I don't use uh, shoulder or neck straps when I'm working. Below that right in the center we have the Alpha 7.4 which I think is currently the best hybrid camera for shooting movies, vlogging and also capturing high quality stills and so that is my pick at the moment. Uh, to the left of that camera we have uh, two Sony microphones. We've got the, um, uh, the digital ECM B1M shotgun microphone which doesn't require any batteries. It works perfectly well just in auto mode and creates really good sound quality. It also has a noise cancelling filter if you're recording audio in a quite loud environments. It does allow me to record audio from behind the camera or in front of the camera so that's a great system. We also have the um, lapel um, Bluetooth microphone there uh, if the shotgun microphone isn't going to meet all of your needs there. Uh, below that I've got uh, three um, Z series batteries because obviously you're going to chew through batteries a little bit more aggressively when shooting movies rather than stills. Uh, below that again I've got a, a small rig Bluetooth grip and a fishbone clamp so this uh, the cameras will go directly onto that fishbone clamp which has an Arca Swiss mount I won't need to be screwing the uh, Bluetooth grip on and off now Sony make a Bluetooth grip themselves but I actually like this one because it extends plus it also that remote is detachable so you don't uh, if you're using the Sony system you'd have to sync the Bluetooth grip and then resync the remote if you're wanting to use that instead this is a uh, one integrated device so you've only got to um, uh, uh, sync that once with the camera uh, also on the right there I have uh, an action cam kit this is Sony's FDR X 3000 action cam. It's now out of production um, so you might have to shop for one of these um, uh, second hand or maybe switch over to one of the alternative brands for these action cams. They are quite good now so uh, take a look at that. And this is going to be mounted to my helmet of my camera. Now I'm all about um, simple selfies uh, rather than suffering selfies. I captured this um, picture of these four guys trying to take a group photo. I'm not too sure where, how, we, how we thought he was going to get on try, by trying to place the camera on that round bin. I probably would have gone to the flat wall instead. I actually uh, helped these guys out by taking the portrait for them. But I'm all about now taking very simple selfies. So if I can work without cables, work without batteries, uh, this is the sort of workflow that I'm really looking for. 
So the things on my shopping list is a very, a very angle screen. That's the flippy screen. That's so you can see and frame what you're is you know, you're shooting when you're in front of the camera rather than just behind the camera. We want that digital audio uh, multi interface shoe, otherwise known as a hot shoe. Uh, but this is going to take the new digital microphones for, to give you that really clean audio quality. I'm really looking for a camera with active steady shot because I don't want to be uh, balancing up a gimbal every time I jump off the motorcycle I want to be able to just uh, shoot with a Bluetooth grip or simply just handheld with no grip at all I'm really looking for um, uh, the PP11 S Cinetone profile uh, S log is just uh, a step too far too much post-production work and so PP11 is a beautiful uh, picture profile there so I really want to uh, have a camera that uses that picture profile and I'm really looking for something that shoots um, 4k in 60p so I can slow down some of the action footage so it looks silky smooth and again that's a very useful addition if you're not using a gimbal so let's take a look at some of the vlogging products okay this one doesn't check all of the boxes but this is going to me be, uh, be the B cam that uh, my friend will be using and that is the ZV-1 um, the audio quality is really not bad You'd, without putting an extra microphone on top uh, it does have a little dead cat you can use and um, that is great with that little uh, Sony Bluetooth grip as well and all of that will go into a Woten Craft uh, waste pack there that so I, d I don't even have to go into one of the panniers um, it's to get out the um, the APS-C or full frame camera I can actually just uh, take this from the waste pack uh, for that immediate access to uh, rolling footage there. One of the other options is the ZV-E10. Um, this is uh, gets almost up to uh, what could uh, do the job for me, but it is still uh, short of a couple of the features that I listed earlier on. Uh, the Alpha 7C is a lovely full frame compact, but it, again, it doesn't have all of the features, uh, i.e. it doesn't have the active steady shot. The ZV-E10 um, does, but um, uh, this one um, doesn't have active steady shot. It doesn't have PP11 and it doesn't do 4K 60p as well so I am very tempted because of the compact nature of this camera easy to put on a Bluetooth grip etc but uh, I really am hanging out for those extra features now if you are if you are choosing the um, the Alpha 7C because of its compact nature you can actually stabilize the footage in post-production using Sony's free Catalyst browse software this gives you uh, active steady shot but you have to do it in post-production to give you an example here uh, the original clip is on the left the stabilized cr clip is on the right you will notice that you do crop in a little bit in order to stabilize your footage that happens the same whether you're doing active steady shot in camera or stabilizing in post-production just um, keep an eye on both sides if that's possible as I just play this clip and you can see how smooth smooth and steady is the stabilized footage is in post-production it's gimbal like so so much uh, so that it uh, it is uh, something that I'm prepared to leave behind is that gimbal and just use active steady shot or uh, catalyst browse as I said, the Alpha 7.4 does tick all of those boxes. It also ticks a box that I didn't know or needed ticking until I actually owned and, and reviewed an Alpha 7.4, and that is the ability to store three registered memories for stills, three additional registered memories for movies, and three more registered memories for slow and quick, or S and Q. So when you're just jumping off the bike and you don't want to be fiddling with the settings, you just dial in a memory and away you go so I could have one set up for 30p one set up for 60p and one set up for 120 frames per second without having to go into the cameras menus and that is certainly going to be a feature that I could make use of on this forthcoming trip so as I said the Alpha 7.4 certainly ticks all of the boxes in the lead up to this trip obviously with Sony releasing new products all of the time anything could change but this is the way uh, I moving forward at the time of creating this video tutorial.
Just to highlight uh, the advantage of that um, digital multi interface shoe is these microphones don't require batteries. They draw the power down from the multi interface shoe. The audio quality is digital. It's not analog that needs to be converted to digital. So it's a very clean audio quality. And if you just leave the um, the microphone in in uh, auto, it does a sterling job. There is um, uh, one that is uh, slightly smaller than the B1M. Now it's the EC dm-b10 and that's the one I'll be taking with me it's just a fraction smaller the other microphone is that lapel microphone it again it is uh, digital uh, and uh, it will um, um, the only downside of uh, this the digital lapel microphone is uh, the unit that you clip uh, to your shirt or jacket uh, those batteries will need charging the one that's on the camera will draw its power down from the multi interface shoe so I, I think I'll be using the shotgun microphone much more uh, than this uh, digital Bluetooth microphone here the lenses, the choice of lenses, Sony um, uh, do uh, give us the option for very light compact uh, wide aperture lenses now uh, they're especially um, for the full frame lenses these are very tiny lenses less than 175 grams so they're really tiny uh, smaller than many of the APS-C lenses it has to be said having said that we do have some new APS-C lenses on the market now uh, some that I've just reviewed and these are the 15 millimeter f 1.4 G very wide aperture for that shallow depth of field and the very wide 11 millimeter um, f uh, 1.8 now the full frame equivalent of that uh, with active steady shot is 19 millimeters so that is the perfect angle of view for hand holding the camera and speaking to camera so that is going to be one of the uh, primary lens choices for this particular trip and this gives me the ability to do one-handed shooting and it has the form factor that I'm really looking for small light lenses small camera gear that are just uh, very um, compact to pack away in one of those most cycle panniers but also very stable to handhold when we're not using the gimbals so um, there's a shot here on a Bluetooth grip one on a gimbal uh, one handheld but there, there is a the perfect form factor for what I'm planning to do on this forthcoming trip. Here are four possible choices. There are other lenses I could choose from such as the 35mm 1.8 and the 15mm 1.4 there but um, the final lens choice will come down to personal preference but the one I have to take is that 11mm f1.8 on the left and I have to say that uh, the other um, have to take lens is the newest lens that I actually own which is the Sigma 90mm f2.8. It has an exceptionally small form factor that's lighter and smaller than Sony's um, 85 millimeter 1.8 yes it doesn't have that maximum 1.8 aperture but at that longer focal length even in APS-C uh, mode or using an APS-C camera you do get the figure ground separation from that 90 mil focal length and if I'm shooting in APS-C mode that has um, an equivalent focal length of 135 millimeter if I use the clear image zoom when filming that will push out all of the way to 200 millimeters so we're basically going from 19 millimeters to 200 millimeters just with the use of four prime lenses and as you can see from these examples I get a very different angle of view or perspective by framing a motorcycle up with uh, maybe the 11 millimeter prime right out to the um, 90 millimeter uh, Sigma prime there so that gives me flexibility of creative choice um, when I'm uh, um, working with these four lenses okay so as I said I, I did prioritize the uh, small rig over the um, the Sony Bluetooth grip the Sony Bluetooth grip is coming along for the journey as well because that's going to be attached uh, to the ZV-1 camera which will do that b-roll footage but for the uh, larger cameras I'm going to be using it on that small rig and as you can see it has a couple of advantages the detachable remote and also the extension now the extension doesn't look very long but it does allow me to just to drop the elbow I don't have to go out of my way to hand hold it at arm's length and that is uh, perhaps just a, a little bit more comfortable uh, for um, some of the longer videos that I might shoot
Okay, so there is the 11 millimeter f1.8, and that is the angle of view you can get. And as you can see, it's a very comfortable angle of view for me uh, talking to camera. And as as you can see, because I'm close to the camera, we are getting that figure ground separation even when shooting in APS-C mode at an f1.8 aperture. Um, the, as we move up in focal lengths, um, we can see we can get figure ground separation with that 24 millimeter when using 30 frames per second in full frame mode. Uh, if you are going to start shooting in um, APS-C mode, you might want to go for a 1.8 prime. But as you can see, as you get closer with that 24 mil, you can get even more figure ground separation as the depth of field shrinks as we get closer to the subject. Um, but if we, as I said, if we are shooting in APS-C mode or with an APS-C sensor, then I'd probably prioritize the 35 mil 1.8 because that is going to give me that figure ground separation. In APS-C mode and with active steady shot, it will extend out to a 60 millimeter full frame equivalent um, but that is still um, well, more than um, usable with the active steady shot anything longer than 35 millimeter you are going to not really want to walk with the camera you are going to want to stand still I would happily walk with the um, the 11 millimeter and 15 and 24 millimeter lenses but as we move beyond 35 mil I will want to hand hold the camera very still while recording the uh, helmet uh, camera is that FDR X3000. It's only four ounces. Uh, it looks um, bigger and heavier, and uh, but is actually still very light. It has some amazing stabilization, so it does create some very stable footage. Instead of just um, putting the uh, the sensor on a steady shot cradle, the whole lens. Uh, and uh, sensor is all stabilized and so it does create some very smooth footage and as I said there it goes on to my um, helmet there with that and I'd also have a wrist uh, uh, remote to go with that so I don't have to reach up to the camera I can just press a button on my wrist and start and stop the camera from filming and the reason it's uh, helmet mounted rather than um, uh, chest mounted is that uh, angle of view the Harley's I'm hiring is uh, I've got screen so I need to get over the top of that screen with the helmet mounted uh, camera there I got a little um, video posted to YouTube, my YouTube channel, showing how smooth this action cam is there. And I'll just play just a, just a few seconds of this so you can see. As you can see, uh, really stable footage. Check out the whole clip uh, on my YouTube channel if you're wanting to see an extended version. It does flare a little bit as you're riding into the sun, but uh, other than that, it's a really good image quality. So I did say I'm taking a Pilot 10L as my second bag which goes in the larger of the two panniers. So that will take my uh, laptop um, and my charger, um, my uh, medical kit and toiletry bag, my liquids there you can see, and uh, an electrical um, kit to um, for the battery charger, etc. And the sensor cleaning gear in there as well. Now there are a couple of luxury items that I would choose to leave behind if, I, if this bag gets a little bit uh, overpacked. That would be the travel mug and maybe that Bluetooth Sony speaker there but if I can squeeze them in those are a couple of luxuries that I put high on my list you'll also see a travel adapter because I'm moving from Australia to uh, America and I'll need to uh, use some things that have got Australian um, uh, plugs attached so I'm going to use that travel adapter as well now all of that comes in at um, five kilos and so that is more than happy in one of those two panniers. The maximum capacity of one of those uh, Harley Davidson panniers is closer to seven kilos, I think. So I'm not going to push that pannier weight limit in any way, shape or form. If we take a look at uh, what's inside that little electrical um, uh, uh, kit there, I can unpack that in greater detail. You can see I'm taking that eyelid sensor cleaning gel stick, a sensor clear two pen, just in case I get any dust inside my cameras there. I've got uh, that uh, power cable, some USB charging, a power bank, uh, USB 3.2, that's a one terabyte 
very fast drive that I can offload some of the footage if my uh, laptop uh, suddenly starts straining it also allows me to create a second backup of the files I'm recording I've got my uh, Z series battery charger there a very short USB-C cable and some micro USB cables for the charging of those other devices and a little uh, sable brush there just for uh, brushing off any uh, dust off the lenses that um, if that needs to be uh, done. Just a reminder this is the Freedom to Dream uh, charity ride and so if you want to support this charity ride, if you want to support uh, uh, children who have been displaced by war, apparently one in six uh, children in the world are impacted by conflict, armed conflict in the world. So this uh, uh, charity does some amazing work for uh, these children in need. You'll be able to catch up with my motorcycle diaries on my YouTube channel and I'd just like to uh, give a real Really big thank you for Wotencraft who make those pilot bags. They've been a supporter not just in supplying the bags for this trip but they're also the biggest uh, donator and the principal sponsor for this charity ride. So a big thank you to Wotencraft. I'm uh, Mark Gaylor uh, for Sony uh, Digital Imaging Ambassador. If you want to uh, catch up with me and um, on um, my support channel I do have uh, a support channel called patreon.com forward slash Mark Gaylor. I do have active Q&A forums, member only seminars, cam set files and also I create these camera specific ebooks that uh, you can download. You can um, become a member for one month for 10 US dollars and download uh, a book for your particular camera. I have other ebooks as well. Okay so um, Thanks for um, listening and uh, just subscribe to the channel so you get to uh, see these motorcycle diaries that are going to be uh, coming out in just a week or two and I'll catch you online later.